friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making green tomato zucchini relish. So let's get started. All right, so yesterday I finally uh, delved into making my own homemade relish. Now last year I did make a chutney and it was just something I used up right away. Now since I'm making a canned relish, um, the thing that's been holding me back is the uh, amount of sugar and store-bought vinegar because I have to use a distilled vinegar for canning this. Because the homemade vinegar is just not acidic enough for canning uh, stuff like this. And so, but then I got to thinking, well, I'm using an organic sugar, and one could also use honey. Uh, that would also be a really good option. And I decided to kind of cut back. I looked up some different recipes, and some of them just, I could not believe how much sugar they were using in it. And so I found one that was a little bit lower in sugar, and then I cut back just a little bit more on it. And I found this turned out really, really good. And I'm thinking I could cut back even more on the sugar. So I'm going to be doing that today. And I used a little bit less of the uh, store-bought vinegar. I hate having to use store-bought vinegar, but at least it's cheap. And this turned out amazingly well. And this was made all with uh, green tomatoes from my garden, one of my own zucchinis and a zucchini I got from a friend and um, some of my own peppers. And so I'm going to get started and show you how I did that. And I'll make a, probably a few more changes today just to cut back that sugar a bit more. And really, we don't eat a lot of relish. Mostly how our relish gets used around here is on, the, on a hamburger once in a while, which we don't cook a lot of hamburgers, and in making tartar sauce for fish. And that's pretty much about it. But I figure um, if nothing else, I can can a bunch and have some to give to my kids um, if they need any relish or at least to have it on the shelves. And I'm really happy with it. So good way to use up some excess green tomatoes and excess zucchini if you have it. Now me, I don't have a lot of excess zucchini because I use it a lot. And I didn't get as much this year as I hoped, though I did decent. But I have a friend who's been blessing me with her overabundance of zucchini. And look at this guy. Isn't he cute? <laughs> funny anyway I got that from her the other day and I'll be using some of this in this but mostly I want to use the green tomatoes because that's what I'm trying to use up the most so when you do this um, what I'm using is a batter bowl or an eight cup measuring cup and so you can use basically whatever ratio you want of green tomato to zucchini um, you can do a half and half, you can do more zucchini than green tomato. You could do all of one and not the other. But I like the color that the zucchini skin adds to the, um, to the relish because it gives it a little bit more of a darker green color. So that's the main reason I'm going to be using that. Otherwise, I have other ways I'd be using up these zucchinis. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you what I do. I'm going to go for at least six cups of, the, of a combination of the tomatoes and the zucchini. So I'm going to get started and speed the rest of this up. So I went ahead and went up to eight cups since I do have a lot of green tomatoes to, to use up. And because I'm going to put a little salt on this to help pull a lot of that water out so I don't end up with a runny uh, relish. And I'm going to use about a quarter cup of salt um, since I will be rinsing this off when I'm ready for it. And um, go ahead and mix that in there. And then while I'm doing, while this is sitting, I'm going to go ahead and cut up my onions and garlic and peppers, and I'll go ahead and add them in here too and let them sit in the brine, but mostly it's the tomatoes and the zucchini I'm concerned about. I've got a handful of garden garlic here, and I'm going to be putting that in. Um, I'll probably still want to add more than that, but I also will be using a dried granulated garlic because I always do that with both because the granulated garlic does also help soak up any excess liquid because I don't want it, I really don't want it too runny. And let's see. Oh, and then I'm down to the very bottom of my, all those onions I pulled because I've been doing so much canning. So I'm down to all, just this, these few and they're all the little guys, but we're going to get these used up today. 
and then I guess it's back to store bought, but that's okay. Our store carries some really good onions, and at least I got a lot here. And all all the onions that have been going into my canning this year have all come from my garden, so that's been pretty cool. But I'm going to chop the onion up in my chopper with the garlic. And again, um, I will link to this chopper below, though I'd still love to find a glass one for a good price that's big enough. Um, this one here has been, even though it's plastic, it's been a really good chopper for me. I like the crank method better than the pump. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'll dump that in there. And then I also have, um, you know, peppers is another good thing you can add. And so I'm using only peppers from my garden. My Anaheims are still coming in, but they're all none of them are getting very big anymore but that's okay i have a nice little handful here and that's that's plenty for what i need all right so i'm going to go ahead and finish chopping up these peppers and these onions i'm going to add them to this and then mix them in with my hands that's the best way to do it is kind of mash it all in there with your hands and then let it sit in the brine for maybe an hour or so i can already see the liquids being pulled out um you could probably go less than that uh, i think a uh, half an hour to an hour is sufficient for making the relish and um, I'll come back when I'm ready for the next step. All right, so it's been almost an hour and I'm here at my sink, obviously. And so I've got this mesh colander and this is for this kind of thing, since I have a lot of stuff chopped up pretty small, this colander is really great for this kind of stuff, um, for rinsing your grains and things like that. So I'm gonna be dumping this whole vat in here because I don't want that much salt ending up in my uh, relish. I may go back and add a little bit more if I need to, but I would rather rinse it just to be sure, but you gotta drain it anyway. This is how I used to do my kimchi when I did the old fashioned brine method, is I usually let it sit overnight and then I would rinse it really good so that it wouldn't be so salty. And then, um, I just kind of mash it down and press as much water out of there as I can. So this could take a little bit, but um, again, I'm going to be adding vinegar to this, so I'm already going to be adding more liquid, so I want to get as much water out of here as I can. And again, this is just um, my recipe based on just kind of looking around and seeing what sort of ratios people used, you know, vinegar, sugar, and then um, coming up with my own and my own um, combination of spices. And I really like the way the batch I did yesterday turned out. I thought it was just absolutely perfect. And it was just a lot of it was kind of guesswork on how much of the spices I wanted to put in. And I didn't measure it. So today is going to be guesswork again. But I'll be tasting it along the way and then kind of giving you an idea how much I put in of each thing. Okay, I'm going to continue to mash this a little bit longer it's almost there and um, I'll then continue on with adding the spices and the other things I do all right now to add my spices my sugar and my vinegar so I'm starting with just a cup of sugar um, last time I did this I did a cup and a half and we'll see how this turns out I think I actually made a little bit bigger batch than I did yesterday so um, that's actually cutting the sugar back even more because I've got more stuff in here and less sugar. And then I'm going to be using, I'm going to start with two cups of the vinegar and we'll see how that tastes. I can get a pretty good idea. I mean, you've got to think your tomatoes are going to be pretty acidic anyway. And this is just a white distilled vinegar. Um, not my first choice, but you could use a good apple cider vinegar. Again, I don't want to use my homemade vinegar because it's just, beans that it's not distilled and all that, it's just not quite strong enough for this. Okay, so the nutmeg I found just tastes really wonderful in it. Now, when it comes to nutmeg, you want to buy your nutmeg whole, not pre-ground. You want to ground it as you go because it's going to be a lot better that way. I don't know that it, it goes rancid quicker, but it's going to lose a lot of its nutritional value. I know at least that much if it's pre-ground and you know nutmeg's super good for you there's a lot of great uh, uh, health benefits in nutmeg though I can't remember what they all were it was years ago I read about it I just know it's great and it's also I know for sure it's one of those things that helps with um, 
you know, helps prevent catching colds, flus, and all that kind of stuff. So that's why it's a good idea to get lots of spices like nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger into your diet, especially during the so-called cold and flu season. So, I don't know. I would say I might be putting a quarter to a half teaspoon at least in here. I'm going to try to see if I can get this whole rest of this thing in here. That's the hard part is when you get down to that little nut. But, oh, it smells wonderful. I absolutely love nutmeg. Okay, kind of hard to get that last little bit. I still haven't figured out the best way to do that. But what I do when I get down to this little, like a piece like that, I just put it in a, I'll brew this into some tea tonight. So I don't have to grate my fingers all the pieces. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put, oh, a tablespoon about of granulated garlic. I'll probably add more after I taste it. We'll see. And then maybe a couple teaspoons of dried mustard. Uh, mustard seed would be good, but I don't have mustard seed on hand, so I'm just trying to go with what I have on hand. About a teaspoon or so of ginger and at least a teaspoon of coriander seed. Okay, and then another thing I really like is the red pepper. It adds, it, since I don't have any, I'm not growing any red peppers of any kind, at least this adds color as well as a little bit of spice without making it too hot. The red pepper flakes. And any of this stuff that I get on Amazon, I will link to below. Um, I believe the mustard and ginger I, I got from uh, Glory Bee, because I used to buy from the co-op here. Um, it's just that sometimes it gets a little bit difficult doing that, and so it, um, you know, you don't always, it doesn't always work out for me to get the things I need, you know, when the orders are going in. So I just end up re resorting to the organic brands I can find on Amazon, like Frontier and Star West are my two favorite. So I'm looking at that, and I can tell I would like just a little bit more red pepper. Since the batch I made yesterday wasn't very hot, there's no reason why I can't add a little bit more to this one and give it just a bit more zing. And then we'll give it a taste test and see if I need to add any more salt in there or anything else, um, any more garlic, any more coriander or anything. Um, actually, I can some of that stuff I can kind of look at it, and I think I'm going to throw in just a little bit more coriander. Okay, that tastes pretty good. It doesn't taste too sweet. I'm almost thinking I could have cut back just a little bit more on that sugar, but it's not too sweet, not for a relish. And I think there's plenty of vinegar in there. We'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go put it on my wood stove and let it simmer for at least 15, 20 minutes, and I'll taste it again and see if maybe it might need a little bit more. I don't think I need to add any more salt to it. I think it's good just the way it is. All right, without setting up any big fancy lights, I'll go ahead and bring you in here. I do have this light right up here, this little bar light. It's battery-operated LEDs. That works really good for me. And um, I've got some yogurt heating up, or milk for making yogurt heating up over here. And then here is my relish. So it's uh, it's got a ways to go because it's, um, this pan is a very thick bottom pan, which is really nice for cooking on a wood stove, but it does take longer for it to heat through. Um, so I do have a ways to go before this is ready to start canning, but I just wanted to show you how I've got this set up here. So I just got done uh, cooking my lunch on there too. I cooked up some uh, diced up green tomatoes with onion and garlic and red pepper flakes in butter and I've been liking that for the past couple days for lunch and another way to use up those green tomatoes. And then over here in this big pot is water I'm heating up for washing dishes. Okay so I'll be back in the kitchen with you when I'm ready to start putting the, this uh, relish into the jars. All right, just got the relish off the wood stove and I'm gonna start filling my hot jars. And again, I like to just put a little bit in each jar just to make sure the jars stay warm while I'm filling the other jars. So just kind of go through, put one little scoop through in at a time in each one. And even if I don't fill all the jars, I would much rather have one jar that, one or two jars that I have to wash um, than to have to worry about a jar breaking because it got too cold. All 
right, this is this is all cooled down now, and this is a jar uh, that I canned yesterday. It was actually only a half a jar to begin with, but I went ahead and canned it, and so now what I'm doing is adding what's left over in the pan into this. As I said, this is cooled off enough now that I don't have to worry about it cracking the jar. It's a little bit warm, but not enough to not enough to be concerned about. And then I've got my jars in the canner right now, which is the All-American canner, and I'll link to it below. I'm using the hot water bath method for this, so I'll be processing for 10 minutes. So anytime you do hot water bath, you want to make sure your water is at least about that much above your jars, and then you're going to boil it. It's got to be a rolling boil for that amount of time, for whatever amount of time you're processing when you're talking hot water bath. Then for this, just 10 minutes is sufficient. All right, so you may have noticed that I was using the Tatler lids, and I do have a video on that that talk about canning lid tips, and you can find that right up here. All right, and that's it on the relish making, at least the way I'm doing it, and that was only my second batch I've ever made. So, and then here again is the batch from yesterday, and today's batch was a little bit bigger than yesterday, so today's batch was less sugary than this one, and I think it's still gonna turn out great. So anyway, Hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new and that you got another way to use up those green tomatoes and zucchini. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.